Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Today, for your Monday, it's going to be Clem versus Serral on Glittering Ashes, one of the new maps. This is the Team Liquid map contest version, not the latter edition. This is from Stay at Home Story Cup. Bottom left, we have Serral. Top right, we have Clem. All right, man. So, these two players are evenly matched, as far as I'm concerned right now. They have both beaten each other in Premier Tournaments over the course of 2021 and 2020. Clem is rising in the ranks. Serral is kind of just staying where he's at, which is an elite Zerg player who can win the World Championship. And, as usual, Clem has a little polar bear with its tongue sticking out as the spinning logo for his command center. Ah, hello, little polar bear. So darn cute. All right, man. Checking for proxies are the Overlord. You're not going to find them because there's a barracks inside the main base for Clem, but you don't know that because you don't drone scout. <laughs> if you want to watch me play StarCraft 2, you can tune into twitch.tv slash Falcon Paladin every Friday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to play teams with Somicron and maybe a viewer or two. Uh, diamond level or higher is the requirement to play with myself and Somicron, because that's where we are. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Anyway, if you like Twitch, check me out. Alright man, so Reaper expand. Hatch gas pool. What the heck? Did that... Is that a cleaning bot that just exploded? Ooh, I don't know what that was... <laughs> Nothing has died. That wasn't like a scouting SCV. That, that was not a scouting SCV death sound at all. Sends the SCV down to check to make sure this wasn't a pool first. Well done by Clem. And Reaper is going to pop. And Reaper's name is uh, Rachel the Viking Engineer. Emperor Manx, you want me to make the Vikings that fly underwater? How can you expect me to design that? The moral of the story is the Dominion's complaint box is the same as the Reaper enlistment box. Ha ha ha. Oh, Rachel the Viking Engineer, you got a request from Manx. You just gotta make it happen, man. You can't tell him he's wrong. You can't tell him his idea is not possible. You can't even ask questions. Ha! The old Reaper Dance. Behold the Reaper Dance in all of its glory! I really... One of these days, man. One of these days, we're gonna see something that changes in the meta of StarCraft 2, and the Reaper Dance will not exist anymore. And I will be pleased, because it's just... It's the same thing every time. This Reaper never gets any kills. Maybe a Ling or two. Maybe a drone if it's extremely lucky. But man, any more than that's impossible against somebody like Serral. There has been an inkling of a rumor of a balance patch coming to StarCraft 2 in the next six months. So I'm not promising anything. This is something I've heard from Somicron who heard it from somebody else. Yes. So yes. That's all. That's all I'm going to say about it. I'm not expecting anything, but if something shows up in six months and it's a balance patch and it's great, I'll be happy. Hmm. Speaking of Somicron, we also do a podcast every week together, the Falcon Paladin Hour. If you want to listen to it, you can check us out on your podcast app, whether it is Google Podcasts or Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Stitcher or anywhere else you get your podcasts. We are there. Just search Falcon Paladin. You'll find us. It's a weekly podcast. It's not too much, I don't think. We talk about StarCraft II tournaments, right? We talk about stuff like right now, what's going on. Uh, Dream DreamHack. DreamHack Masters is going on right now. That's a ton of fun. We also talk about TV shows and movies and books, so if you like my kind of ramblings about current events and pop culture, well, the podcast is the place for you. Nice KD8 charge. Ooh, but it helped the queen get closer. <laughs> Alright, man. So the pokes are real. So Clem, he just has this ability to do macro and a micro at a level together that not many other Terran players can get to. I mean, obviously, the Four Horsemen, Innovation in his peak, Morrow in his peak... Right, a lot of these great players, very good at doing that very thing, but Clem, ooh, he's just, he has this ability, this natural innate ability to expand a million times. Cloak Banshee follow-up from Clem. Like, he'll just have a sixth base up way before any other Terran will against a Zerg, right? So let's watch that. Let's watch that timing here. He didn't go for a super fast third today. That third is up, but it's almost five minutes. 
Hellion's pushing about. Hellion count is about... Oh, there's two more coming. Is this Hellbat? I have an armory. Yes, production tab says armory. That's why we're not YOLOing these Hellions in. It's because we need them to be Hellbats later. And I think that's a bit of a tell here, too. What is over? Ooh, there's a Banshee already up. Gets a couple drone kills there. Nice. It's a little bit telling, right? Ah, Queen stays alive. Are you kidding me? Oh, my gosh. But if the Hellions die before they turn into Hellbats, that's not good. Oh, man. Oh, Reaper goes down fairly well. Rachel, the Viking engineer. Sorry to... Sorry to witness your death here today. <sighs> if only Manx would let you just keep your job. All right, so third base lands. Spire's on the way. There are eight Hellions remaining, so that's a good number. Now we're going to Hellbat them. Are there Metavacs? No. Interestingly enough, usually if you're going for the Hellbat thing, you want a couple Metavacs, but instead it's going to be Hellbat Banshee. Which, you know, queens are kind of incredible against. Baneling's trying to come up, but nuh uh. Say the Hellbats. No, you're not. You're not getting any Banelings here. Cancel those immediately. Queens really want the Banshees to die. They're the larger threat here. And yeah, they can handle the Hellbats pretty darn well. But uh, oh, nice Baneling connection. They do bonus damage versus Hellbats because Hellbats are light. Just like Hellions are. Banshees cruising with their cloak. You don't get a Spire. Oh, maybe you do get a Spire. All right, fine. You don't get drones. Brr, brr. Bruh, five drones down. I don't know. The damage here hasn't really been enough to slow Cyril down immensely, but being slowed down just a little bit is uh, very scary indeed if you're playing against Clem. Fourth base from Cyril. Coming up left side. Glittering Ashes. This is actually a map where I cast a game between Cyril and Trap yesterday. It's a great game, by the way. If you like PBZs or if you're a fan of Cyril or Trap, be sure to check that one out. I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes the YouTube algorithm doesn't recommend videos to people who want to see my videos. I don't know why. But just keep in mind, I will be posting new StarCraft 2 content to this channel on Sundays, Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, okay? So if you haven't seen a new cast from me for like three days, it is not because I haven't cast anything because I have. I'm as consistent, probably too consistent, honestly. It maybe hurts me. But I'm serious. Go to youtube.com slash falcon paladin and just look for it manually and you'll see all the new stuff that you've been missing all right all right i had somebody complain about the, the other day the, oh man youtube's been recommending me your stuff your new stuff and then i missed this one from two weeks ago because it didn't show me and i really wanted to see something like this like yeah there you go see anyway third base is defended by a great wall of supply depots kind of this left side's really open and kind of scarily open actually but Baneling's coming up this is kind of a rainer thing to do but sarah likes to do it as well here come the marines here come the hell bats drilling claws on the way clem is implementing the widow mines into his strategy which i just feel like it's correlation is not causation ah widow mine catches the banelings that's huge these banelings are like hmm uh, or just explode there, I guess. Oh, there's mute. Oh, I guess the spires from mutas. Why did I not expect there to be mutalists here? Okay, that's interesting. Either way, Marine Hellbat push coming in. There's enough Ling Bane Queen here. I think they can hold it. Pulling back to the Widow Mines is always a good idea. More Widow Mines joining the party. But yeah, correlation's not causation. But the number of times I see elite Terran players make Widow Mines against their Zerg opponents, they seem to win about 85% of the time. That's a great Widow Mine hit. The Widow Mine dies, but totally paid for itself there. Without a doubt. Without the tiniest of doubts. That Widow Mine is not. Oh, the Unfurl by Clem is sick! Oh my gosh, that's so sick. Oh. Alright. Well. Eh. Widow Mine does get a connection on a Queen there, but Transfuses heal that pretty easily. Trying to jump on this, but the stutters. There's the surround, and there's the pickup. And no, you, some people got left behind. That's never good. And guess what? Clem's got more reinforcements, man. He's got a fourth base up. He's making it a planetary fortress because that's traditional play. I don't know. I haven't seen Serral go mutas in a while. This is kind of interesting. I like it. They're really good against this medevac stuff because they can chase down your medevacs and kill them. But also being very cautious about these Widow Mines, as you need to do. This Widow Mine is still... And it's ready to fire. Oh, no. Kill it. Kill the Widow Mine before it burrows. It burrows so fast, but not fast enough. 
Clem pushing around the right side. Gonna kill maybe an overlord, quite possibly. Yep, sacrificing one marine for a baneling. That's pretty good. That marine actually didn't die to the baneling. I, maybe that didn't happen. Did I did I miss miss envision that? I don't know. How well defended is your fourth base, Clem? Is it defended against a lot of mutas? The answer is probably not enough. And by golly, that turret dies fast. And this base is in a ton of trouble. Continuing to pop. Oh, no, he's going home. I was going to say, he's pushing. Just kidding. He's going home to try to save this planetary. Five SCVs go down. A lot of lost mining time there, too. This missile turret does not get saved at all. The mute account is just too darn high, but yeah, we don't mind. Not catching a good hit there, but they made some other good hits here today. Off creep banelings. Not exactly what you want to be seeing, but look at this. Mutalist control. How many has he lost here today? Seven. He's still got 12. He's killing SCVs all over the place. This Mutalist Karras is eternal. Let me tell you something. This is something that has been in StarCraft since 1998. Since StarCraft was invented and released to the world. Okay, so you're watching this Mutalisk versus SCV stuff, harassing a Terran, missile turrets out to defend. It's eternal. It is eternal in video game lore. I know most of you guys do not watch my Brood War stuff, but maybe you should. There's a lot of similarities in Brood War and StarCraft 2. Not a ton, but I think there's enough to where it's all StarCraft. That's my personal opinion, and I love it all. Wings cruising on into the Marines. And this push is good. Again, Widow Mines to fall back to if necessary. I think Cyril's in a pretty good spot. Income is uh, largely favoring him in this game, which you need. Widow Mines are getting picked off, so that's good. The Widow Mine count is not being allowed to get up to, like, 20. There's eight. But I think a lot of those are fairly new and joining the front here now. Got a Thor up to deal with the aforementioned and uh, often talked about Mutalisks. He's like, alright, I got enough Baneling to just kind of do this thing. Let's kill that Thor. The Thor is here to absorb Baneling shots, though. Because that's what you do. Ling's rolling. Oh, thinking about rolling into the third. Can't do it. Mutalisks in the main! That's the name of a book somewhere. Mutalisks in the main. Oh, the turret stays alive, though. Are you kidding me? Do they have any upgrades? No. If they had flyer attack one, I think they could have got that turret. Trying to come into this. Oh, you skimped on replacing your turret at the natural, and you're going to pay for it. Oh, yeah. That's a bunch of dead SCVs that really maybe shouldn't be dead. Four SCVs going down. Quem really taking care of those as well as he can. Lings. Oh, they do get into the third base and cause a ton of problems. Mutalisks. Maybe trying to jump on this fourth base. Decide not to. There's already a turret there. There's already a bunch of SCVs. This is kind of just everywhere Serral, though, right? He's killing missile turrets, which you think they're not going to help you, Zerglings, but they help the Mutalisks. Absolutely true. Coming back into the main. Dude, is Clem just going to die? I'm feeling... Oh, man. I dropped some changelings, too, so you have to worry about those. Dude, the SCV death count is uh, 42 right now. 42 right now. Clem needs to kill a base or at least kill, like, 20 drones if he's going to do this thing. Because that income tab just went blurp. Especially because all the... Well, that's because you ran away from the third base. And you actually can't resaturate it because they only have five SCVs there. Not a good thing. Okay, so here's a drop. But when there's mutalisks out, it's so scary to go for drops. There's 15 mutas out, man. I think this medevac's just dead. Oh, yeah, that medevac. Oh, full medevac. No, it gets saved. It got one HP. Lucky. Lucky, um, lucky medevac there. Crikey, might. 2-2 coming in from Serral. 3-3 on the, already on the way for Clem, though. That's a nice upgrade advantage that you're going to have. The Mutas are like, all right, let's move into the main base then. You still don't have a turret replacement. Pauses. Clem just not taking these Mutalisks super seriously. I don't know what it is. He's just gambling. He's gambling that he can not build a turret in his mineral line and the Mutas won't come back. At least not before he does decide to get around to building a turret. And then he pays for it. Look, the Natural doesn't have a turret either. This push is pretty scary, though. Is there anything down here to save this? No. The answer is no. Remember when I said he needs to kill a base? It looks like he's going to kill a base. Look at him. He's like, he's, uh, is anything going to try to save this thing? Oh, yes. A million lings and banelings. Absolutely. So, Widowmind Friendly Fire is definitely a concern. That's one of the things that makes... Is that a Widowmind shot? It sure was. A 25 kill Widowmind. Hatch goes down. All right, man. Clem doing what he needs to do, but this planetary is dead. Is he trying to keep the Banelings alive? Just kill this with Lings? Kind of, yeah, to some extent. Ah, uh, that's not good. Base for a base is not what Clem wants. He wants dead Zerg base and to keep his bases alive. 27, 28 SCVs have died in the last minute here. 
That is 75 SCVs, but let's keep in mind that Clem is good enough, and Terran is a race that can absorb a ton of losses to their workers and still be fine. Oh, is that a Widow Mine shot? 21 kill Widow Mine! Dude, these Widow Mines are doing some work today. And that's what's really helping Clem stay in this game. If he didn't have Widow Mines, I think he'd just be dead by now. Cyril's playing this well enough to where... Lings up here. He's got lings in here. But, you know, when you got a Terran sitting at your front door, suddenly it's extremely scary. Banely Ness getting sniped would be a big freaking deal. Dude, this planetary is going to die to Mutalisks too, though. This game, Cyril and Clem never disappoints. They never disappoint. Hit that like button, by the way, if you're enjoying this match. Dude, Clem, I just... Economically, he's hurting, but he's got army on this side of the map. Is it enough, though? I mean, look, man. Sure, Cyril lost his natural. He lost his fourth or third or whatever this was. He's going to lose some tech, probably, which is not great. But these mules are just kind of kicking butt and taking names. Going after this orbital is a huge deal. Oh, that's big. 17 drones have died. Okay, this hatch is dead, too. But these left side bases that are mining for Cyril are muy importante. Lair gonna die. That's not even a hive, baby. This is just Mutaling Baneling on Lair Tech. Look at him taking out production facilities here for Clem. Income tab is favoring Cyril. But all of his tech structures are dying. Is he replacing these tech structures anywhere? Not really. No, dude. This is getting an epic tag. I don't care. We're at 139 to 129 supply at 16 minutes. Epic tag, Clem versus Cyril from Stay at Home Story Cup, man. This is the upper bracket finals. It's not the final finals, but it's the upper bracket finals, and you can see why. These two players are doing super duper mega ultra well. Are you okay? So if these mutalisks, they got plus one flyer. Okay, that's good. Free SCVs is nice. Clem does not have a lot of SCVs. Losing two SCVs is a big deal. I mean, I don't know how he has income at all, but he certainly does. That is natural. That's where he has income. Is that his natural? But the army supplies 126 to 84. Evolution Chamber is getting sniped on down. Mutas are kind of base racing, which is a little bit interesting. Yeah, Clem does not have the money to produce a lot. Also, he's supply blocked now, which is bad. But this hatch dies too, and this hatch is going to die. Brrr, Cyril's expanding to this top left hand and the bottom right, but that one gets spotted. That's where he's trying to rebuild all of his tech. Dude, we are in full base race mode right now. This is intense. All right, man. So production facilities for both players, not hot at the moment. Also, Clem is supply blocked into the ground, but also he's losing his factories. He's losing his barracks. This base staying alive is a big freaking deal for Clem, but it's mining out incredibly fast. Dude, that Thor dying. He's magic boxing it. Widowmine does connect. Widowmine connects there. A medevac goes down too. How careful is he going to be with these mutas? He's got tissue regeneration. Oh, but he lost a couple there to the Thor hits. Is Clem going to win this game with effectively one mineral patch of mining available to him? This game's not over. This game's not... Oh, the Mutas, though! He loses two of them very quickly. That is why making Mutalisks is a super scary thing. It's because if you don't control them perfectly and you accidentally fly over Thors, Missile Turrets, Widow Mines, or Marines, you're just going to lose all of them. Oh, this base is dying too from Cyril. Clem, he's fighting... He's fighting so hard right now. Does he have an Overseer? Oh my gosh, he doesn't. Oh, he does have an Overseer. Where is it? He's like, bring it up here, please. I need this. Oh, and this base goes down. I'm surprised it's not already dead, actually. I kind of I, I checked I, I checked out with that. Cyril's expanding up to the 12 o'clock on Clem's side of the map. Does he have enough control? This is sick control. Out of, oh, out of Cyril and Clem, actually. The supply block is absolutely real right now. Taking down this factory so you can't make any more. Thor production is incredible. There's still a Thor. There's a Thor with this army. He's got 10 kills. He's doing just fine, thanks. Armory snipe would be pretty good, too. The Mutas are like, can we just win with this? No. These are 3-3 three, three Marines. We got Lings out. They do have 2-2. Two, two. They do have... That's it. They have 2-2. Two, two. They can't beat this army straight up. This is going to be have to be a game where Cyril kills Clem's buildings. Or he gets some kind of an economy up here. What are these drones doing? Why are they running through war zones and getting absolutely murderized? Maybe it's to throw Clem off the scent. Maybe to make Clem think there's stuff down here. Which there could be. He has enough money to build another base. Yeah, this is epic. This may be the most epic ZVT I have cast 
in a year? I, longer, possibly? I don't know. Dude, the mutas are just picking away at the edges. The tissue regeneration allows them to survive way longer than they should. Oh, these you can't just send a couple marines out at a time here, Clem. Your production tab is empty right now. Every marine that dies is a problem. The 12 o'clock hatch dies too, though. That is eight hatcheries killed. Two planetaries, two orbitals. Okay, hold on. Clem doesn't have... He has an orbital left. Dude, this base dying too is so big. Oh, there's Banelings though. When the heck did he make a Bane? He made a Baneling nest and Clem wins the game. What? It's army value. It's eight to 66 army value. Clem at the end of the game has four SCVs, one orbital command, which is here. And that's it, man. I, he's got the bigger army, which is the best deal. And you know what they always say? Never base race a Terran. So Glim's army is not huge. He's got 24 Marines, four Marauders, and a Thor with some Widow Mines. But Cyril, that's it, man. Cyril. Uh, are all his buildings dead? No, no, no. He's still got... Oh, this painting nest is just here, huh? All right. I guess <laughs> it's just here. There's this hatch. It's technically alive, but the army is ready to ready to rock on that. So, wow! I cannot believe Clem pulled that out. What an absolute boss this kid is. Never base race a Terran. Clem is not an exception to that rule as a Terran. Not even close. Yeah, I mean, Mutas are dying here. The Widow Mine Marines and Thors are just so good against the Mutas, even with good control. Ugh, Thor splash. And then the Thor soaking it up, right? Hang on. Those mutas die before... Like, after the game's over. So I need to see what Serral has left. It feels a tiny bit premature. Like, he could still do this kind of mutalisk micro stuff and try to pick off units at the periphery because Clem isn't building anything else. You know what? I guess... It would be different if Clem didn't have this orbital, right? If Clem didn't have the orbital, I think Serral would have stuck around longer. Yeah, so basically, a lot of Banelings explode on the Thor, which is definitely a mistake. Uh, engaging off creep was probably a mistake too, but this creep is not exactly creep spread, you know? Yeah, so there's your pause, and there it is. So yeah, end of the day, there's like 8, 10, maybe Mutalisks left. Resources lost are 40,000 for Cyril and 30,000 for Clem. I mean, just, that was astounding. That was one of the better 20 minute ZVDs I've ever seen. I didn't know there was a game this good at Home Story Cup. Nobody told me about this one. 36 mutas died. Yeah, so, I mean, Cyril's on my list of players that I trust with mutas. But today, man, losing 36 of them and having about 10, 8 to 10 left at the end of the game is rough. Widow Mines, good unit. Clem knows how to use them. He knows how to reposition them, unburrow them when they're not going to hit something juicy. He didn't defend against the Mutalisks all that particularly well, but then he's like, you know what? The Mutas can't defend their base super well. That's not what they're meant to do. Not like Lurkers or Ultras could, right? So Clem just went. He just moved. Killed eight hatcheries and a lair, so that's nine. That's enough to kill someone. And remember when Clem had lost like 85 SCVs and Cyril had lost like 20? That, what a comeback, man. What an absolutely sick game there from Clem. This kid... I mean, disrespect him at your own peril. He's going to be... I feel like he's going to be a future world champion at this rate. He's just going to do it. He's just the next the next European, you know? <sighs> Incredible. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff indeed from this match. <laughs> and that's going to be it for me today. This has been the Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of... StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.